Hi and welcome back to the cottage everyone. So glad you're here joining me. It has been a super busy past couple of weeks here at the cottage. We have a big behind the scenes project going on that I hope to be able to share with you really soon. In the meantime, it's taking up all of our spare time and I haven't really had a chance to sit down and work through any really in-depth video ideas for this week. And so today I'm going to be giving a very casual tour of our mudroom at the cottage and explain how we're able to keep it organized. Now I call this space the mudroom, but really it is very multifunctional. I'm going to share all the different aspects of this space. This is the room that is located right off of the garage. So most of the time, probably 90 to 95% of the time, our family enters our home through this space. First, I want to point out a few of the finishes in this space. We did use a Cortec luxury vinyl plank for our flooring and this is different from the rest of the flooring on the main and second levels of this house which is solid hardwood we just knew that coming in and out of this door there's going to be more sand more dirt possibly some water on someone's shoes and we wanted it to be easily mopped and cleaned up and also having it be a high traffic zone we just knew it would get a lot of wear and so we wanted this a little bit more durable and it has worked really well. We were very intentional in our designing to include windows wherever possible in every room of the house. And we were able to accomplish this with most spaces, I think, except for a couple of rooms that don't have windows. The window in the mudroom is fairly small, but it's an awning style window, so it opens from the bottom up and it lets in good light and also it has great airflow when we have it open. The walls, trim, and cabinets in this space are all white and that just helps to reflect the light from the one window that we have and it just kind of makes everything feel a little bit more spacious and bright and airy and we really love having white walls in actually our entire house. It just bounces that light around so well. This is the view that we see when we first enter our home from the garage. It's not quite as pretty as the view from the front door but it does serve a very good purpose. We were very careful in our design. Even though our home is small, we wanted to have a nice large space that we could all enter in. We have a family of seven and having just a small little entryway that we're coming in and out of on a daily basis just would not work for us. And so this space was allocated, even though we have a small footprint for our house, to be very functional. To the left you will see our small powder room bathroom and this is key for our mudroom space. This bathroom gets used by our children on a daily basis probably about again 90% of the time. It is the spot that they go when they are playing outside and they just need to pop in really quick to use the bathroom. It's where they wash their hands before meal times and this is just such a convenient spot to have a bathroom. If you are designing a house, I would highly recommend having a bathroom located right off of the garage. We've lived in houses where the bathroom, you had to walk through the entire house to get to it, or even you had to walk upstairs to get to it. And definitely it was not as user friendly as this little powder room is. It only has a toilet and then the sink and it doesn't need a shower or anything like that. It's just small and it gets the job done. I do have plans to do some makeovers in this space at some point, but for now it's just light and bright and open. Undoubtedly, the most unique feature of the powder room is this 1930s vintage Kohler cast iron sink. And it was something that my husband refinished. We did a video about it here on this channel and he had rescued it from his grandparents' farmstead. It had been sitting out in the woods Able, he was able to refinish it and it's held up very well. It did give the plumbers a little bit of a headache when it came time to install, but they worked through all the plumbing issues and it's servicing us beautifully right now. And we really love having the statement piece. The main open space of the mudroom holds the washer and dryer, so it could technically also be considered our laundry room. I do have plans in the not too distant future to add some open shelving where I can display some of the laundry needs that I have, such as the powder detergent that I use and the wool balls, just have them up on that shelf for easy access and just to kind of give it a little bit of a decor theme in here. 
But overall, the washer and dryer, again, they're not used super often. I do laundry just once per week. I've done a video about that as well if you'd like to check that out. And it just works really well as a laundry space the days that I need to use it for that purpose. Next to the washer and dryer is a long counter space that has cabinets below and cabinets above. And this is something that was very intentionally put in our design as well because we knew as a family of seven, we needed a spot to drop things. It's called kind of in the realm of house design, it's sort of called a drop zone. And I am well aware that it's not always going to be perfectly clean like it is right now in this video. There's usually a few things piled here um, depending on the day. If there's something we need to remember to grab before we leave the house, we will set it on this counter so that we can see it as we walk to the garage. We recently purchased this charging station that we have here. Before we were just plugging in our devices and kind of sharing the outlets and so when one person was done charging their phone then another person could come in and charge. But this works really well to charge multiple devices at once and I think it kind of cleans up the area as well. And I will link this product below if you're interested in something similar. We just purchased it on Amazon and it's been a good product for us so far. We have only had it for about a month so I can't give a detailed uh, long-term review on it but so far it's been working really well and it's very user-friendly. The wall opposite of the washer and dryer is just a long wall that's left bare and initially when we were planning I figured that this wall would become a spot that would have a bench and maybe some coat hooks and things like that but so far we haven't really found a need for that because we take off our shoes in the garage there's a nice landing there and the kids have lockers so their coats and shoes and everything kind of stay out there so we really haven't had a need for that down the line i could see that possibly we would include a small bench and a few hooks here but for right now it has not been a necessity and so we have not gone that route we do have a pile of kids instruments in the corner though and all three of our boys are in orchestra they all play the violin and so they each have their own violin just because of the way that the class is they're in different grade levels and they can't really share right now because it's summer they're here at home but during the school year those instruments will be at the school our two older boys also play guitar and so there are a couple guitars here as well and I have thought about maybe including some hooks on this wall and just kind of hanging up those instruments but again it just has not been a priority so far so now I'm going to show you what's inside the drawers and the cabinets of this little drop space. Starting with the upper cabinets, the one closest to the washer and dryer right now holds the laundry materials. Like I mentioned, I do plan to move them to the open shelves at some point. Um, the cleaning supplies are also up here, including all of the wood floor cleaners and my day-to-day -day cleaners that I use around the house. I try to keep that to a minimum and I have them in a caddy that I can carry from room to room so that I don't have to have cleaning items in each room of the house and just keep them all right here. We also have some bins for things such as sunscreen and sunglasses, bug spray, and we have a little bin here for chewing gum which is one of my guilty pleasures. I love this particular type of chewing gum. We also have a bin of very specific house care items and that includes things like a little paint pen if we get a little scratch in our wood flooring. We have a stain pen that is the exact match color for our flooring and so we can just go around and touch that up and a color that matches our front door if we get a little scuff on that. So all of those really specific home products are kept here in this cabinet instead of out in the garage. The other upper cabinet holds a variety of items. The top shelf right now is dedicated towards like home decor things and so this is sort of my shelf. This is where I keep the decor that is kind of off season right now. I'm not using it on display in the house. And then we have some healthcare items. We've got baskets that hold heating pads and different braces and wraps if a person were to get a sprained ankle or a sore arm or something. We have boxes for band-aids and then all of our medicine is kept on these Lazy Susans. And initially these trays were being used in the kitchen but I recently did a full organization of that space and I was able to move the spices into a spice drawer 
and these that was what was on these Lazy Susans before. So I was able to move those over here into the mudroom to use for eye medicines and I really love how functional it is. It's just so much easier to find what you need instead of sorting through a basket every time that you need like a cough syrup or an Advil or something like that. You can just spin the little Lazy Susan around and find what you need quickly. I also keep my purse in this cabinet as well as our keys and that just makes it super simple to grab on the way out the door. We also have some extra notepads, post-it notes, pens, the checkbook and various business type items, some envelopes and things like that in this cabinet. This drawer is where we keep all of our electronics that are not currently in use. We have a spot for all of the phones and the AirPods and the headphones and our GPS system that we take with us when we go on long trips. All of those things can be kept in this drawer when they're not in use and it just keeps it nice and organized to have everything in one spot. The other drawer is probably what would be considered by most to be a junk drawer. And I guess I would consider it a junk drawer or like a miscellaneous drawer. And I know that a lot of minimalists on different podcasts or YouTube channels will warn against having a drawer like this where there's just a lot of random things inside of it. But for our family, it works really well to have smaller quantities of many different things to be in one drawer just because these things are accessed by us on a daily basis or an every other day basis at the very least. And it's just nice to have them all here and accessible. We've got things like a tape measure and a screwdriver, batteries, tape, pencils, all those little light bulbs that you need for various appliances throughout the house. And we just like having that collection all together instead of having a separate spot for each different thing. As long as I am careful to check up on it every day or two just to make sure that everything is kind of getting back in the right order, it has been able to stay fairly decently uncluttered. Now onto the lower cabinets. So the one right below the junk drawer is where I keep all of the kids' school supplies, so extra notebooks and folders and things like that. We are doing kind of a little summer school kind of just to keep their brains working. And so I have all the materials down there for that. I'm working with my girls on reading, kind of building up their reading skills. And so we do have different reading materials down there that we have been working through this summer. And during the school year, it's where I will put their different books and things that they bring home that they have at home to keep. Um, different workbooks and things like that. And so this spot will be very useful come the school year as well. And the other lower cabinet is where I keep all of the video equipment, my camera, microphone, tripod. And I also have a small basket here where I put mail that I have not yet decided if I'm going to keep it or throw it. If it's something I need to respond to, I usually put it next to my computer right away, but sometimes you get those things in the mail that you're just not quite sure where they go. And so I have this basket and this is sort of a new system for me. I'm trying to figure out the whole paper clutter thing. That is one area that I struggle with when it comes to clutter. We also have a spot here where we keep all of our plastic bags that we get from grocery stores and we use these bags as our garbage liners for our garbage cans throughout the house. We don't get a lot of these bags because I do shop at Aldi and so I use reusable bags a lot of the time, but it's handy to keep the plastic ones to use as the garbage liners and so we have a, pl a place where we put them. And then I have a spot where I have mailing items, so larger mailers, envelopes of various sizes, and our address book. So that's about it, guys. That's everything that I have to share with you here in our mudroom space. Um, I hope you enjoyed this casual little tour so you can see how we keep things and different ways that we organize. I know it's not a very formal video, but it was fun to just kind of give you a little look around. I hope that you'll consider sticking around this channel by subscribing and especially be looking forward to an update in the next two or three weeks about that big behind the scenes project that we have going on. In the meantime, I hope that you have a great day and I hope that you'll stop by the cottage again really soon.